Hello everyone, Darren here, and on today's episode we are going to look at how to play the tier 10 German medium tank, the Leopard 1. This tank is often agreed upon to be both the best and worst NATO medium tank for its good gun stats but lack of armor, which makes it difficult for average players to grasp the somewhat unique playstyle of this tank. So let's get into it. Now, starting with the armor, it's pretty safe to say that the armor on the Leopard 1 is, well, non-existent. The strongest armor on the tank is the upper front plate on the hull, which is 70mm. Overall, the Leopard follows the design philosophy of speed is armor, which means, quite frankly, that your armor is your mobility. Other than that, this tank is a moving ammo rack and an HE arty magnet. Now moving on to the mobility and the engine of the Leopard 1, it is very good in terms of mobility. Forward speed is a very good 65 km per hour forward, with an excellent reverse speed of 23 km per hour. This means you will be able to quickly get to an advantageous position, fire, and be able to quickly reposition to flank the enemy or get another angle. Now, the chance of fire is at 10% which is fantastic, so you could almost effectively forego running a fire extinguisher and use food. Now, regarding the gun, it has some of the best stats for any 105mm L7 gun. Base accuracy is the best at .30, and a base reload time of 8.69 seconds. Gun depression is about in the middle of NATO medium tanks at 9 degrees, with an average elevation of 20 degrees. This means you will have no problem fighting on or around ridge lines and hills, but remember that your lack of armor does not take punishment well. Now, how do you set up the Leopard 1? Well, in terms of consumables, I run 35 APCR, 20 heat, and 5 HEP rounds. And HEP is another version of HESH, which is why I use the uh, HE on this tank. I also run my usual loadout of a repair kit, first aid kit, and a fire extinguisher because of my luck with artillery. But, of course, if you have firefighting skills, you can swap the fire extinguisher for food if you wish. Now, for equipment, I use a gun rammer, vertical stabilizers, and optics to improve the vision because the gun is already very good. But, of course, if you wish to improve the tank performance overall, you can swap the optics for vents if you wish to do so. Now, how do you play the Leopard 1? Now, playing the Leopard 1, I have found that this tank is pretty much a combination of a Sniper TD and a Bat Chat, which is probably why a lot of average or uh, newer players do not fully understand how to play this and quickly get eliminated when they play it wrong. The speed allows you to get to where you need to go very quickly, but the gun and lack of armor pretty much forces you to play as a second or third line support tank if you wish to do well. The bat chat like quality has also come to play when the game is finishing up, and provided you have a good chunk of HP left, you'll be able to zoom around the map and finish up the enemy tanks with relative ease and reliability. Just remember, you have no armor. And if you get hit in the front hull, it's because it is almost a guaranteed ammo rack. And if you do bounce some rounds, more than likely it was a miracle granted by RNG Jesus himself, and not because of your armor. That concludes the overview of the Leopard 1. Now let's look at some gameplay. So here we are on Kitimat, uh, standard battle. I'm spawning on the south side, and real quick, I must apologize. This game happened during a stream, but I was smart enough to try and record footage of it, just it, it was mixed up a bit, so didn't capture all of it. So I need to go back and use the replay system. So the first couple minutes are going to be the replay system. But anyway, like I said, I don't play this tank a whole lot. Um, rarely, actually. So I didn't really know where to position this tank. I knew how to play it. I just didn't know the best places to make use of it while still protecting myself in the armor. 
So what I'm going to try and do is try and take up a uh, supporting role a little bit to try and snipe anything that may get spotted earlier heading over to C1 or B1 right around there. Now the Sheridan gets lit up there in the middle and as I see him moving into the plant um, I don't want to get spotted just yet so I roll onto the other side of the railroad tracks to try to break uh, the vision and prevent him from spotting me. Now I see that the E100 is over there. I also notice that another light tank in the middle gets spotted, but he's much closer and looking to make a more aggressive approach on that side of the railroad tracks that I was on. So I move back onto the other side. Unfortunately, because there's two light tanks on, one light tank on each side, I get spotted by the, uh, the Sheridan, and so now I'm lit up. Seeing that I'm not being targeted by anything, I roll onto the railroad tracks to try and get a shot on the Object 277, but I get targeted, so I immediately back off. I see that the only tank that was actually aiming at me was the Object 268 version 4, so I wanted to try and see if I could get a shot on him before he gets a shot on me. I don't even manage to get a good shot, but I do manage to miss the shot that the version 4 did fire at me. So I'm going to break the vision, I'm going to break the detected, and I'm going to go back towards my base and go around towards C1, uh, the far, the less direct route, the safe route. So I'm going to move up closer. Uh, I'm still a little bit hesitant because I don't want to get spotted too f out in the open, so I'm making sure that I try and not get myself into trouble just yet. Too early in the game to make a mistake in my opinion. So what I'm going to do is I see that uh, there's a lot more tanks. Try and get a good, see if I can get some shots on those far tanks up there. But then I also noticed that the light tank here in the middle, our light tank, might be in some trouble. So I decided to rush forward to try and help him out. I wasn't paying too much attention to the hit points on either tank. Um, again, there we go. There's that break I needed to... Uh, you know, managed to catch in the rest of the game from my perspective, the proper perspective now, so you can see everything. Uh, managed to get a good shot on the TVP-50 uh, VTU, as well as also taking care of the Sheridan. And then the K-91 decides to roll up like that in the flank, uh, exposed for me and for anyone else. I managed to track the uh, K-91, uh, damaging him as well as getting track assist and eliminating the K-91. VTU, I managed to uh, damage his tracks, thus tracking him in place, and he couldn't really do anything. I guess he burned his repair kit already. And he didn't reverse in time to uh, get to safety, and so I was able to safely put a shot into him and eliminating the VTU. So I'm deciding to be a little bit more aggressive now to try and protect the northern flank here. I wasn't paying attention to the rest of the team over there in B23. I did not realize that I was kind of taking a risk of going alone, but... I'm, I'm trying to take care of the Object 268 version 4, who has a, uh, who's hell-bent on trying to eliminate me because I am paper, effectively. So, what do I do is I switch to heat rounds because we all know the 268 version 4 is a pain to deal with, with standard rounds with, and sometimes even heat rounds with its weird armor setup. So, what am I going to do is uh, have the heat loaded, be a little bit more spart with my shot placement. Luckily, the 268 version 4 stops rocking to try and get a shot up on me, and I take that opportunity to put a shot into his lower plate and take care of him. Now, I'm, I know the E100 has a long reload time. I also know he has a pretty longish aim time. So, because he's aiming at me and he has that aim time, I'm able to put a, uh, safely put a heat round into the turret cheeks of the E100. I still have heat loaded. I don't remember if I forgot that I had heat loaded or if um, I kept it like that just in case. But I was aware that I could get uh, rushed by the Object 277. So I got out of there. I uh, took the trench route because I did the E100, as you can see, decided to pursue me. And I didn't want to get into a uh, fight uh, in close quarters with an E100 and a 277. So I backed off to take a little bit more of a support role here. I see that the uh, E100 is low health. I also see that a friendly medium tank is rushing in to uh, deal with the E100. Uh, E100 gets eliminated by the Progetto 65, and I decide to try and flank the Object 277, as I now have medium tank teammates to try and help support me if I get into trouble. 
So I sneak up behind the 277. 277 detects me, but he's too focused on the 4202 and the Progetto 65 to worry about who shows up behind him. Uh, 4202, uh, you know, close quarters fight, whatever the tactic that would be called. Blah, diffs one of my shots, bounce off him, so I go around on the other side and get some good side shots into him. Switched back to APCR at some point that I missed while describing that fight right there. Badger's over there, so I'm going to take a wide route to try and either prevent him from getting a line of sight on me or to try and flank him. Both, really. Uh, get a good shot on the T92, but I forgot that I had HEP and not HE. And so, or just, I forgot I had HE in general, to be honest. And um, I did not have that loaded to take care of the artillery piece. I was more focused on the Badger. So it's at this point here that I'm going to try and flank these heavy tanks. And this is what gets me into trouble. I got greedy. I, um, with three tanks, I figured they'd be uh, low health. I get some good shots on the Badger here. But I'm cautious because I don't know what's on the other side. I didn't want to get rushed. Oh, hey, look, exactly my biggest fear of being just accidentally stumbling upon uh, some heavy tanks with a good amount of health. And lo and behold, it is exactly that. Now, Badger's still fighting, so I'm able to get some shots on the Badger. But the Super Conquer is creeping up on me and not wanting to deal with another tank. I eliminate the Badger because I had the rear end of the Badger facing me and I figured I could eliminate him. Now, I damage the turret. I take a shot from the Super Conquer and now I'm a one shot here. I'm still shooting APCR. I'm looking behind me to see if there's like, some cover. I'm also ammo racked now. I'm ammo racked. I already burned my repair kit at some point in the game. And so I can't, re I can't, I don't have the health to trade. I can't even risk because all he has to do is just hit me and I'm going to die. And I have now a really long reload time. I can't out trade him at this point. So I'm sitting back waiting for an opportunity to roll out and get a shot on the Super Conquer here. Now I've got the, uh, I got the Scorpion and other tanks rolling up to uh, assist uh, with the tank that remains, which is the 279E. And I managed to take care of the 279E with the remaining shot. And as you can see, it's a um, very, very good game being able to take the uh, pros of the tank, as well as being aware of the cons and the weaknesses of the tank, and being able to walk away with pretty much 7k combined damage and a mastery badge and top gun high caliber metal as well in the leopard one a very good game for a tank that i've played less than 10 battles in and overall the uh tier 9 tank is also a very good uh precursor to, of what to expect out of the leopard one so if you've played the tier 9 and didn't free xp to the tier 10 you're going to have a very good idea of what to expect and how to play the leopard one And that concludes today's video on how to play the Leopard 1. I'd like to thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos like this one, don't forget to subscribe. But until next time, this has been Darren of Watsy Academy.